Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast Weekly Rundown. My name's Adam Glenn, joined by my friend Dax Holt. How are you, sir? I'm so good. We are getting so close to wrapping up this year. We only got, what, two more rundowns at this point left before pretty much. the end of the year? This yeah, I mean, crazy. we're pretty much, I mean, we're not checked out. We're still in the game. You know, we're still doing our stuff, but it's uh, I'm in Miami right now doing my... Uh, my snowbird for a few weeks, um, trying to run down, trying to get some celebrities here, as you can tell by my hair. Dax somehow <laughs> has recuperated from parting from Argentina last week and hanging out with Jimmy <laughs> Kimmel. How was Jimmy Kimmel, by the way? Jimmy was awesome. So, um, you know, my company, Trophy Smack, we make all these like championship belts and fantasy football trophies and all this kind of stuff. And uh, so we got to be a part of the jimmy kimmel la bowl and uh this is our second year running we provide all the championship belts for the bowl game and so as part of that we actually get to go to the bowl game and hang out and we get this cabana that's sick it's right on the field so you're like right next to all the the players at sofi um but we get to go hang out with jimmy at a at a certain point and we get to take photos with him he's super nice i don't know if he actually remembers us from last year or not because he says like good to see you but i kind of said it first so <laughs> i don't know if he's just copying what i'm saying yeah, yeah. um but no super great guy and he brings his whole family so like his sister was running around backstage putting our belts on his wife was there he, he he's like such a family guy that he like brings everyone into like all of the funness that he gets to do and then we hung out with Guillermo for a little bit um up in the press area so just like a really fun I, I don't know opportunity I guess so when Guillermo's around does Guillermo have like he just runs around by himself right I don't think mm -hmm. Guillermo has an entourage is that correct uh, he doesn't have an entourage he had I mean he was walking around with people but I don't know if that's just because it was kind of like chaperoning him to where he needed to go but I would say, which is really funny, is the cameras at the bowl, like they go into Jimmy and people cheer. When the cameras hit Guillermo, more people cheer. Yeah. He's yeah, he like, he is like the guy, like everyone loves him. And it's funny that he's like almost more popular than Jimmy. Yeah. You know, he's, um, he's, he's a fun guy. I've met Jimmy a few times. I've met Guillermo. And he's like a character. I met Guillermo, and I think he's parting a little bit. And and it's funny because Jimmy, it's not, it's a real relationship. Like Jimmy loves Guillermo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's like it's definitely you say like a family vibe with Jimmy, and it's right. Like he he looks at him like family. And Jimmy's just a cool dude, um, just a nice guy. Just I don't know. I like him. I like him as a person. I like his show. He's great. All right, let's get to our top ten stories of the week. Actually, before we do that, let's read some reviews. Do you have some reviews ready? I got a couple of reviews. All right, let's go to this one. This one is from Cat256454. Uh, it says, A Hollywood gem. I have been podcast shopping ever since my favorite pop culture TV shows were canceled a month ago. After trying and hating so many pods, I finally found something that scratches that itch. I love all the blind uh, behind the scenes insight and, of course, keeping up to date with the latest celebrity news. Thanks, guys. I wonder what podcast they found. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little nervous about this. Like, okay. Just kidding. Thank you, Kat. Thank, uh, you, thank right. you. We appreciate that. Thank you, Kat. That. Appreciate that. What's another one, Dax? All right. This one's pretty long, so maybe we'll just do two today. This one comes from Laney B234. Five stars. 10 out of 10. Great podcast series. I absolutely love listening to you guys. Plus, my husband enjoys your delivery and version of the juicy behind-the-scenes tidbits more than any other podcast. I've tried to force him to listen to. He actually asked if we're going to listen to Hollywood Raw podcast when we get in the car now. I really appreciate your storytelling abilities as photog slash journalist sharing your personal experiences. You guys are never braggy or refusing to discuss certain celebrities because they're your friends or like some other podcast inter or entertainment podcast. You stay true to your art and your listeners. I love being along for the ride. Thanks, guys. Oh, that's a good one. Really and I like that we've roped in the husband, too. Yeah, no, that's definitely cool. That I would say to that, yeah, I would say there's some celebrities that are my friends. 
um, some, very, very few. But there's a lot of them, like, I know. And when I mean I know, like, if we see each other, like, oh, what's up? How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Um, you know, speaking of which, I'm going to give one shout out. Uh, Shaq did a, you know, he's a, he's a buddy. Shaq did this thing on HBO. It's like a four episode series. Highly mm-hmm. suggested if you're somewhat of a sports fan. It's just Shaq is a very interesting guy, and I loved the Shaq documentary. Like, it's a Shaq. It's like the Michael Jordan thing, but they did it on Shaq. I actually think it was it shot better than the Michael Jordan one. It's just done better really? than the Michael Jordan one. Yeah, so good. And I, and I know Shaq's story, but every time you watch it, you learn something a little bit new, and this one's really good. All right, on to our top 10 stories of the week, Dax. What's number 10? Number 10, Ashley Darby from uh, The Real Housewives of Potomac and Luke I hope I'm saying his name. Gul- Gulbrinson. Is that how you say his name? Just I say watch. just say Summer House. Summer Luke. House. Yeah. And Summer House, motherfucking Luke. They are together. It looks like uh, they are uh, going Instagram official. Um, you know, they, they posted a photo of the two of them. And basically, the definition of a winter wonderland. I didn't know I missed snow so much. And uh, it's it's a photo, really cute photo of them. Obviously, people are going nuts on social media, saying how cute they look together. You know, she is recently divorced. I think uh, her divorce was filed or made official back in like April or something like that and so the two of the them met at BravoCon I guess Andy had kind of uh, uh, helped facilitate this meeting they started hanging out they started really liking each other and uh, they've been hanging out behind the scenes but now they're going official I don't know either of these two <laughs> yeah but I know love- Adam is a huge summer house fan so that's why it made our list so it's it's one of those things where people do love ashley darby and luke Summerhouse. winter house is going on right now it's weird because luke so they met at BravoCon. they hit it off and i just mm-hmm. saw like i was at BravoCon. i wasn't actually at the event i was at the place before the event and uh, the hotel and i saw people going crazy for ashley darby luke on the other hand it's interesting because luke wasn't asked to go on last season's summer house which was weird. Okay. They, um, but listen, it's a hot new romance in the Bravo world. Um, she's a little bit older. Uh, Luke has been, uh, I guess, linked back to Sierra from Summer House, also Hannah. Uh, but now he's with Ashley Darby. It's one of those things where if I saw them two, I would never kind of put them two together just because of the generation gap a little bit, the age. But hey, listen, they're a new Bravo romance. It's always good for Bravo. We'll see if he goes on Housewives with her. I don't know if she'll appear on Summer House. Well, he's not on Summer House, but if, I don't. You know what? They're back on Winter House, and I wonder if he's going back on Winter House. It's weird. It gets very. I, I wonder. I do wonder if sometimes your personal relationships can help land you a, a new spot. Like if he's not back on Summer House, oh, but now he's dating a real housewife. Now people find him interesting. Now we want him back on the show. Yeah, no, I I don't know. That'd be tough to see. I, I can't see this bringing back his star power to make him relevant enough where they want him on Summer House. You know, will it keep well, him on Winter needs, House? Because Winter House I, I is a little bit I don't even know who home. he is, so <laughs> I'm just making shit up over here. Okay. All right. Let's get to number nine. <laughs> you hate this show. Let's get to number nine. All right, number nine, Britney Spears is alive, everyone. Don't worry, don't worry at all. Uh, So a lot of her fans have been freaking out online, convinced that she has either been kidnapped or she's missing or she's, God forbid, dead, uh, just because there was a lot of recycled Instagram uh, content over the last couple weeks, and so people have been like, something is wrong here. But on top of that, Prez Hilton putting out his video, his social media, very cryptic video, him talking about how something is really wrong inside of the Britney's world, but he can't say anything about it. It was, it was like, cool. Thanks Perez for, you know, you've spent your whole career basically giving out every detail, but now like everyone's interested and you won't say a damn word, uh, saying that like he talked to a friend and they had all the inside scoop, whatever. Well, uh, TMZ has confirmed that she is alive, she is in Mexico, and all the those videos of her in the shower, her like kind of erotica videos, those are all fresh new content, they're not old recycled stuff, uh, but um, there was a video, or uh, I think it was a video or a, of her on a plane with Sam, and they said they were going to New York. Um, when they weren't actually going to New York, that was just to throw people off so that when they could go to Mexico and have a good time by themselves without the paps following them around. So I guess that was a, a planned out thing. 
Nevertheless, I still think that there is something really weird going on um, in the Britney Spears world. Uh, I I don't know. She she does not seem all healthy, is all I can say. Yeah, no, I I saw the post. And it's funny. I reached out to a photographer uh, once I saw that post, and actually, I learned about this post from our uh, uh, from our Facebook group Facebook off the record. Group. And I saw the post and said, off to New York. So I hit another photographer. And, and it's funny. None of the photographers in New York were like, okay, cool. Like, they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll wait. Because nobody believed it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It's just unlike Britney to say that she was coming to New York. Going so somewhere. no one – yeah, no one, no one fell for that. As far as the video she's been posting on social, it's funny. I mean, I don't know if this is a little like a hot take on it. I don't think it's a hot take, but it's like everyone was free Britney, pro Britney, free Britney. And then you start to see the stuff she's still doing. And I think everyone's like kind of leaned back like, listen, I think she needs to be free, but there's still something that could be an issue. Uh, Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, 100 percent, because I okay. watch it. And I'm just like, what's going on? Like. I want Britney to be free and I want her to live her life, but I am concerned that she's just not all there anymore. And I hate to say it because I'm, I've been a big Britney supporter for so long, but I also don't want her to ruin everything she's built by doing weird shit on social media, you know? Yeah. She, know. no, but it's funny from that post that she was going to uh, New York. Nobody, none of the photographers fell for that photo. They're like, yeah, okay. Like no one, I, I even called some guys who are big Britney shooters and guys who like no one even jumped like, oh god, gotta go to the airport, gotta go to the private airport and see if she comes in. Um, the content she's hey, still oh, throwing on Instagram, it's, it's it's weird. It's just weird. But I would say there was some more weirdness. Is she literally kind of threw out uh, a white flag to her mom, which I we haven't seen. She's been trashing her parents obviously since the conservatorship ended, but. In one of her latest posts, she said, Mom, we can go have coffee together now. I'm treated as an equal. Let's have coffee and talk about it. I'm like, oh, wow. Now we're there, there's an olive branch being extended to her mom. I, I did not see that coming. She had posted a, a weird post about her sister as well. And everyone's like, wait, I thought I thought you hated your sister. Now you're you're posting about her. So just a lot of weird content that doesn't make any sense. It's very erratic. So about that, let's get I think there was apparently, allegedly, uh, there was a little inside like p thing to that where her mom wouldn't allow her to have coffee. So I think it was like a, an actual like punch to the stomach mm. to her mom. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Um, but again, Brittany, we'll see what 2023 has in store for Brittany. All right, number no eight. Coffee? No yeah. coffee? That, that might be the worst thing I've heard so far. <laughs> <laughs> the abuse. <laughs> God, uh, no coffee. That's just mean. All right. Uh, let's go. What, what number are we on? Eight? Number eight. Number eight. Lala Kent. Oh, this is some weird stuff. But she uh, she revealed a bunch of bruises and raw red skin on her face after undergoing a cosmetic procedure to plump up her skin. So on um, on Tuesday, she posted a bunch of stories on her Instagram where um, it's basically, I think it's called PRF and microneedling is what she called it. Uh, but she she said she went under this procedure. It is to help uh, get rid of like uh, scar tissue and like revitalize your skin and plump it up and do all. all it's kind of more of a, I don't want to say natural way, but it, instead of using fillers, you do this where you're kind of, you take out the platelets you spin them around and then you inject them back into your face and it's a natural way of your skin to feel like refreshed but damn the results look scary as hell like her her face is all like bloody it looks like she had this massive like sunburn slash it's peeling it just looks really kind of nasty uh, but she said that she will update all of her fans over the next couple of weeks on the progress. She is down right now from doing any filming. So this is like her one time to do a procedure like this and have the time to heal and recover and be ready to go for cameras again. Um, and, you know, but she, she's never shied away from all the plastic surgery and stuff that she's done. She's had her her breasts redone. She's had um, injections. She's had uh, what else? She, she said she would have a butt lift or um butt in 
implants if she could. Uh, so she she's talked all about the the different things that she's done to herself. If you look up Lala from when she started Bravo and then to where she is now, I mean, it's a completely different person. I mean, she does not mm -hmm. look anything like she did. She looks great right now, but I don't know if that's a like if it's a turn off a little bit like eh, you weren't that's not natural i don't know i don't it's not for me it's for other people to decide i don't really care but um i will say this about lala she's been very good at keeping her name relevant in the last few months you know she's been no very kidding, man. it's so crazy how much she's like gets in the news and like everything she does make like this is a procedure that's very common it's not uncommon she's not the only star that's done this but somehow this made like Daily Mail, this story, and it's not—it's not like a, a random um, beauty benefit. Everyone does this, so it's just crazy how she's been able to keep her name relevant. Well, my thought, my thought was, I wonder how much this place paid her for this, because she did tag the uh, the company or like the. Um, doctor's office i don't know what the hell it is that, uh, that did all this prf and micro needling so she tagged them so i'm thinking i bet the procedure was free but i'm also wondering how much she got paid to go on and show her face off looking like this because everyone's talking about it so this is great publicity for the company that did it so from my experience a lot of these places when it comes to something like this because people want a service mm -hmm. like this they won't pay but they'll do it for free like for example that doctor that uh, office will do whatever she wants. They'll do all her, you know, her Botox, her fillers. Like that's the one place she'll go, and she could do whatever she wants there as long as like that's non-surgical yeah, in exchange that, that, for social posts. Me, to me, that I don't think it'd be worth it for her. Like, let's say that's a five hundred dollar procedure. What is five hundred dollars for her when she has millions of followers? She could make thirty thousand dollars a post just to get. A free five hundred dollar procedure that doesn't make any sense. Mm, you'd be surprised. I mean, I've been around some of these people so much. When it's something that they want, I consults did for a product mm. that was a very expensive product. Um, and when I mean expensive, it's about a ten thousand dollar product. I don't want to go into the exact details of what it is. And I had billionaires reaching out to me asking for free ones for social posts. These are billionaires where it shouldn't even matter the money, but wanted a free one and they'd be one you know so they could afford it but they rather get it for free so and right. yeah so all right number seven dex number seven aaron paul officially becomes aaron paul <laughs> so aaron paul from breaking bad i don't know if most people know this but paul was actually not his last name um uh so and i didn't know did you know that uh i did not know that no, so it, Paul has been like his stage name for a very long time. His birth name was Stur, Sturvent or something like that. Sturvent. I don't even know how to say. It. I've never said it before. Um, but that was his surname for since birth, and he's been going by Aaron Paul ever since before his Breaking Bad days. Well, he filed some um, court documents to officially legally change his his last name to Paul along with his wife. And uh, and his son, and so everyone is now a Paul. And um, I, I mean, it's just kind of funny to say Aaron Paul is now Aaron Paul, but that is the case. And so, um, yeah, that was just a big story for the day. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, 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 there's a lot of celebrities that don't go by their 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 real name, um, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, everyone, a lot of uh, people have stage names. A lot of them. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorites is Jeff Ross, the comedian. You know, the Roastmaster. Mm -hmm. His name is his real name is Jeff Lipschitz. Yeah, Lipschitz? Jeff Lipschitz. Lipschitz. <laughs> That's his real name. And then he went to Lip, Jeff Lipschultz and then changed it to Jeff Ross. I mean, there's majority of these celebrities don't have their, their don't, I should say majority of them. But I mean, if you Google it, like celebrities' real names, a lot of them don't go by their real names. It's the stage name, which is kind of funny. It's, it like shows how Katie much. Katy Perry people... is what? Catherine Hudson or something like that? Yeah. So there, so... there's quite a few. Yeah, but listen, I would never know. I just thought Aaron Paul was Aaron Paul. You know, I he was just. Was but I think it's just easier for him to go about and just have that name. Just, I think it's just it's got to make your life just a little bit easier. I would say yes, that? but I think there is also an advantage to having your legal name being something else, so that you can hide away 
properties and bank accounts and make a call to a doctor's office and they say, what's your name? And you say, Cervant or whatever the hell it is. And no one knows that you're Aaron Paul on the other side. Like I, I got to imagine there's, there's got to be times where you don't want to be known and over the phone being one of those. And it's got to be kind of nice to be able to dip under the radar. You know, majority of these people have assistants, so it's always under the assistant's name. You know, yeah, or the assistant's to like check on your like blood test results, and there's like something a little funky. And now you got to say, "Oh, Mayor and Paul." So I just tried at, just to see, like, out of curiosity. <laughs> I called like restaurants down the Jersey Shore uh, during mm -hmm. the summer, and I just said, "My, you know, hi, I'm Bruce Springsteen's assistant, trying to get a reservation at places that normally don't give reservations." And just to yeah. hear the restaurant panic, like, oh, my God, what do we do? We don't give reservations, but it's Bruce Springsteen. What do we do? Like, I don't know. That's, <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> like, I, I, it's actually a really good, fun thing to do to see how people respond, to play, especially restaurants or places that are normally, like, not in the Hollywood or New York bubble, like, just outside. Wait, so did where, you like, end up making the reservation? Um, no, I think I just started fucking with them, and then I just hung up or something like that. But I called, like, a few places, like, yes, yeah, you know, and, like, they're like, oh, we don't take, ah, what do we do? Ah. And I can hear them scrambling in the back, like, what do we do? Like, do we, you know, um, I mean, they would have closed up shop. All right, what's number six, Dax? Uh, number six, JoJo Siwa says that she got effing played after her split with A.V. Cyrus. Um, she got, she basically says she got used for clout. So she had this whole social video that, um, that her mom shared and she was talking about, it was like a boomerang or she, I'm sorry. When she asked why she was mad, the uh, boomerang songstress claimed that she was mad. She got used. Um, and this comes on the heels of her and Avery Cyrus breaking up. And so we all assume that she is referring to Avery. She didn't name her, but that's what it kind of seems like. And by the way, before anyone asks, no, Avery Cyrus is not related to Miley Cyrus. I did have to look that up. Uh, not related to her. Uh, but it does seem like, you know, everyone's talking about her now. So if Cloud is what she wanted, Cloud is what she got. Um, yeah. JoJo Siwa is pretty vocal. Like, she's not <laughs> – like, when shit happens in her life, she's, like, she's pretty, like, outspoken from – calling out Candace Cameron recently for being a, a, a like the meanest celebrity to her like she's she seems feisty she doesn't hide away and I think that's why she's been a good reality star for so long you know what I'm saying yeah. like she just has that personality where she just says what's on her mind doesn't care you know who knows the inner truths like she just goes with it and uh yeah I think that's why she also gets a lot of publicity because she doesn't shy away from it but she says, like, she didn't want, you know, this girl, she calls out this girl, her ex, for for dating JoJo because she was trying to get clout. But her calling her out like this is just giving this girl more clout. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're giving her that attention that she wanted. So I almost was like, eh, it kind of worked against you. All right, let's get, let's move along. Number five. Uh, looks like Pete Davidson dating another new person. This is hilarious. Like, every week we have literally talked about Pete Davidson dating someone. This one may have a little more oomph behind it. So um, he has been seen out with uh, Chase Suey Wonders, which was his co-star from Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Um, they went to a Rangers game last week, and, and then there's been more pictures of them that uh, kind of seem like this is actually a thing, not just a publicity stunt at a Rangers game, because they were photographed outside his apartment building on Monday, and they were chatting it up, laughing, trying to kind of keep a low profile. He's got his hood on him. He's in his sweatpants. And so if they're hanging out at his house, trying to keep a low profile, it kind of seems like maybe something's happening here. I think something's happening. Um, I, of all things to bring her to, he brought her to a Rangers game, like, I think that's – you know there's – so when you go to a, a Knicks game or a Rangers game, you're part of Celebrity Row. And part of the the requirement is, A, that you have to, like, agree to be on the Jumbotron. B, that you're going to get photographed. So he knew the camera was going to be on him. They quickly were to say, hey, we're friends. We were in a movie together. But they were at Whole Foods together. They were seen going back to his apartment. I think something's there. I mean I didn't know who this girl was really beforehand, but she's very pretty. Um I kind of like her, like, this, and he's he, to me he's good at making her a more, star. Yeah, this to me seems more legit than the Emily Ratajkowski thing. Yeah, and I agree. Emily, like that seemed like a press stunt opportunity. Both of them, it works in their favor for both of them. 
the photos of hit her at his house, I think, okay, that that wasn't set up. Like, they didn't know cameras were going to catch them there, so I think they were legit hanging out on off time together. Yeah, I think this is something brewing. We don't know, but I think it's – right now, friends, or they're moving in that direction. You know, you know it's just – there's a lot, a lot of hangouts, and again, I think this is more natural than the Emily one. The Emily one was just a weird whole deal. I just, yeah, yeah. that could have been. That was just weird. All right, and, and honestly, the the Emily problem, the mm-hmm. first time they were seen together, could have been could have been handled by a thirty five dollar Uber. You know, you could you didn't have to pick her up. You could have sent an Uber to pick her up and drop her off wherever you got, and you could have been totally unrecognized. Like if she's come back to your apartment, or if you're going to go to dinner. It could have been very easy, but that whole problem could have been could have been avoided by a thirty five dollar Uber. And that's from Brooklyn to Manhattan. I've, I've done that Uber. I know it's thirty five dollars. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Number four. All right. OJ Simpson was on the Full Send podcast. I don't know if you guys saw this. This was obviously a massive interview for them to get. Adam, what were you saying in the the Facebook group that he only does? interviews if he's paid at this point yeah so here's a little dirt that we kind of talked about in the in the uh off the record private facebook group oj only does things to get he's so he lives in vegas most of the time but then he comes to florida during like the winter he only does things he gets paid for now apparently the people from the people i know in vegas they say oj is the nicest guy he'll take photos with you he goes to the same bar and watches football every single week he's like around he's a nice guy He's How a he nice makes... guy until you're married to him and he kills you. Yeah, until you piss him off. But um, what he does for how he makes his money is he does autograph signings. He does like golf appearances where rich people will pay him to play golf with them. And then also um, now it looks like podcasts. Now into the story, according to former host of the Full Send podcast, Bob Menery, Bob Murray says he reached out to have OJ on the podcast. OJ wanted $100,000. And at the time, Full Sense said no. But eventually, I guess they caved in and paid OJ. According to Menery, they, you know, that was the number. It was $100,000. It might have dropped a little bit lower. We don't know. But they definitely got paid. And actually, he did get paid. According to my sources, he was paid. But I don't know the sum. But the original amount OJ wanted was $100,000. Anything OJ does, he gets paid in cash because he owes the Ron um, the Ron Goldman estate, the family, a lot of money. I think it's like ninety six million at this point. He owes them, and any money he makes that he has to claim that money that's on paper, he has to kind of pay them money. Since the murder, since I think it's nineteen ninety six, he's only paid the family a hundred thousand um, dollars. But that's why he does everything in cash because it's they can't untraceable. It's untraceable. So. It's yeah. so bad, like, so bad. I, I, I can't even with OJ. Um, not only that, so obviously there's that side of it. Then the other side of it is they asked him, you know, are you upset that, that the killer of Ron and Nicole was never found? OJ was not having that question. He said, right now I'm not going to discuss any of that. Yeah, I think it's a pretty obvious question. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going there. Um so apparently that is kind of one of the stipulations. He, he doesn't talk about the court case because that could get him into a lot of trouble. Um, but uh, the other thing that was brought up was Chloe and whether or not he is potentially the father of Chloe. And again, he said, absolutely not. He said, I was, he basically said, I wasn't attracted to Kris Jenner. Obviously he knew her. She was cute back in the day because I was dating supermodels at the time. Nothing against Chris. I just wasn't attracted to her. She wasn't attracted to me. So, no, I'm not Chloe's dad. Um, and it just seems like that rumor will not go away. It keeps getting brought up every couple of years. Um, and it's just like move along at this t- at this point. Yeah, that's annoying. I Hopefully this was the end of it. Um, I will say this, though. Um, the One of the rules of the podcast for the interview was they were not able to bring up the Nicole Brown Simpson, Ron, Ronald Goldman murder. Of course, how do you have OJ there and not kind of bring it up? You have to talk about the elf in the room and at least push him. And they tried to see what they could get away, get away with, and apparently it got things got awkward. All right, enough with uh, OJ is not Chloe's dad. Let's get out of that whole rumor. Let's get to number three. Number three is uh, John Mayer talking about the inspiration for Your Body is a Wonderland. So if, if you have been following that for many, many years – 
everyone thought the story or the song was about Jennifer Love Hewitt because he was dating Jennifer Love Hewitt at the time Your Body is a Wonderland came out. Everyone was like, holy shit, this song is amazing and it must be about her. And he never really said yes or no. And so everyone just kind of assumed that that was the truth. Well, he went on Call Her Daddy on the podcast as a holiday special. This was a huge get for her, I think, personally, to have John Mayer on the podcast. I mean, she's got some huge stars, but John Mayer is a big one for her. And uh, she asked, she, she said, uh, you know, you never talked about this, but was that about your girlfriend or a celebrity? And he said, nope, this was about my first girlfriend. It was about the feeling, which I think was already sort of nostalgic. I was 21 when I wrote that song, and it was nostalgic for being 16. He goes, you know, I, I he goes, I had never even met a celebrity at the time that I wrote that song. And he goes, you know, everyone kind of just associated it, but that was not the case. I It was not about anyone in particular that was a celebrity. So I thought that was kind of interesting, getting that little behind-the-scenes knowledge. And he also got into the fact that, you know, he, he doesn't like that kind of womanizer title. Um, that That's not him. He stopped drinking like five years ago. And he's not even really dating at this point. He's like, it just, it doesn't interest me. I don't want to be that person out doing a five-hour date. He's like, I'd rather be the person that sits at home and that she comes over and they share a Wi-Fi password and they watch TV and kind of just do their own thing, but not, he's like, I, I just, I, I don't want that lifestyle anymore. And because he doesn't drink anymore, he doesn't have the liquid courage when it comes to relationships. Yeah, I, 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 here's my thoughts on this. I, I'm a huge John Mayer fan, one of the best concerts I've seen. I'm a big Dead & Co fan because of John Mayer. I just, I enjoy him a lot. I miss John Mayer a little bit. I miss the funny John Mayer. I mean, he still shows those glimpses of it. And people, I, I hate it when people turned on him. Like, hey, he was funny. People were like, oh, he's an asshole. He's trying to say it. I was like, dude, he's funny. Like, he's legit funny. Um, I did find this to be, like, hard. And, and just because I'm such a John Mayer fan, for him to go and call me daddy, is like, dude, you should have went on, like, I, I really just... I, I don't know. I would have more enjoyed the interview You're like just on jealous Stern. Didn't come on our podcast. True, but I would have rather him do Stern. You know, <laughs> um, I just I, I don't know. He's never done Stern before, and I was like, how do you not do Howard Stern? But you do Alex Cooper, and it was just like I don't know. Either you learn something, or you hear his perspective. Or if he goes on Rogan, then it's a long interview. But I would just would rather him do an interview with Stern. But how do you do Stern and not Alex? Cooper? How do you do Alex Cooper, not Stern? I don't understand that. I don't get that. Um, props that to Alex weird. Cooper for that. getting the interview. Um, but I just, if he, I don't know why he went, thought he was going to do an interview. Um, but to go on Call Me Daddy, it's like, dude, it was just a lame movie. You know what sucks about John Mayer? And this kind of, a lot of, Alex Cooper's audience is a lot of women. Great. Awesome. John Mayer concert like he's a he's a great musician he's a great musician the only beef I have it's like you still have those girls that look at him as like a hunk and they like woo they, they treat him like he's Justin Bieber I'm like no dude like he's he's great so that's a, it just bothers me I don't know what bothers you but uh, okay well, I know. What, I don't understand I mean, what bothers you about John like, Mayer. Talking about I, it it sucks when you go to his concert and they treat him like he's Justin Bieber like oh he's so hot I'm like no he's also a musician. He's a good-looking guy, but he's a great musician. <laughs> but they're not allowed to think he's hot. <laughs> yeah, it just it ruins the experience because they want him to like. He does solos, like he does like, like he plays a guitar and plays solos, and they want him to like sing yeah, like the, I the think, hits. And like I don't, I, think I, I, I like when he plays the appeal the for people is he is the double threat. He's good-looking and he's super talented. I think he's a triple threat because I think he's also super funny. So you got all of that, and so that's part of his appeal. You can't take that away from people. I do think he's really funny, and I think it sucks that people shamed him when he tried to be funny. Like, oh, he's yeah. not funny. He, like, he's this guy's great. Funny. I, I absolutely love John Mayer. Um, I just I wish we got to see more of him. Now he's very reclusive, and I think that he has to be because him being so public ruined a lot of his big relationships. And I think he probably regrets it. Like I, I, to this day, I think he probably kicks himself that it, it didn't work out with Jennifer Aniston because it became too public and he talked about it and she didn't like that so much. Again, I'll end with this. I wish he did Howard Stern before call me daddy. I just think it would have yeah. been, I think Howard would have pressed him a little bit more or try to, it would have been more relatable or fun. Cause Howard Stern's just, he's Howard Stern. All right. Number two. Number two, Brandy Glanville. Oh, she is uh, 
She's going to have an awkward Christmas dinner with Eddie Cibrian after basically calling him out for an alleged uh, affair that he had back back in the day uh, when they were actually married. So we all obviously knew about the Leanne Rimes one, uh, but she said that he also had another one, uh, alleged one, with Piper Paraboo, which is really funny considering Piper and Leanne Rimes were co-stars in, um, what was that movie? Coyote Ugly? Yeah. Did you think about that? Like co-stars? Yeah, and I, no, was like... I, I was thinking about it, yeah. <laughs> so Brandy... Um, she was speaking with Page Six in an interview that was posted on Tuesday, and she said that um, Eddie, when they were married, went to film The Cave, who whose co-star was Piper Perbu, and said that they were banging each other during the 2005 action horror film, and said that uh, she... He, this is what she says. She said, they did a movie together, and my son Mason was one years old, and I went to the set, and I was there, and it was in another country like Romania. She said that when she got there, that Piper was a horrible C word to her, and uh, that uh, she started making friends with a bunch of people on the set and started hearing some rumors. She said that Piper was flirting with Eddie right in front of her, and she was like, I'm right here. Am I the only person seeing like what's happening? Like you're flirting with my husband in front of me. And so she said, okay. And then I'm hearing all these stories that she did confront him once he got back from filming. And he was like, no, 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 no. Um, but she said, you know, he was, he lied about it. And there was av- obviously an affair that had happened. And I'm just thinking the crazy part is Brandy and Eddie actually get along and they celebrate holidays together why she would say this right before Christmas where they're going to be in the same room together is super awkward. Like she does not shy away from any confrontation and making him look terrible right now. Yeah. It was very like you're, you made an awkward holiday. Number one. Why now? Why now? That's that, why bring this up now? Yeah. And, oh, and he actually said that he goes, I'm sad that I have to address this. This was his quote on it. I really believe that we had come a long way, but this was untrue 19 years ago, and it's untrue now. Um, he, he put that statement out to in touch. And just because someone thinks something might be true doesn't make it true. This is all oh, so unnecessary. Fun times at the Christmas table await. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great statement. That's yeah. a great statement. I mean, I wish I was a fly on the wall in that room, but that's a great statement. Very weird to bring it up. You... Yeah, I mean, it was weird. I give Eddie props for that statement. <laughs> like to end it with that oh, kind of Brandy. note is very nice, but Brandy is just, just it's so. I don't want to say a weird move, but it's a weird move. It is a weird move, but you know what? She always great gives great interviews, and if you haven't heard her interview that we had with her, when when was that? Like a year and a half ago? I don't yeah. know when we had. She was great. She 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 is one of the best people to interview because she doesn't give a fuck. Exactly. All right, Dax, the number one story of the week. Number one story of the week, Brad Pitt and his rumored girlfriend, Ines de Ramon. Uh, It seems like they are actually heating up even more. They spent his 59th birthday together over the weekend. You know, um, it was here in Hollywood. He had a a birthday. A bunch of his famous friends showed up. Sean Penn was there, Cindy Crawford, Randy Gerber, um, and uh, Ines was also there for the dinner. And it seems like, you know, these, these... dating rumors that were sparked back in November uh, because they were at a Bono concert, well, it has turned into much more than that because if she's at the birthday dinner meeting all of his friends, hanging out with all the people closest to him on his big night, it seems that this is is moving forward. And uh, I guess one source told Us Weekly that Pitt is quote-unquote smitten with De De Ramon. What a weird word to say, smitten. Smitten is a weird word, but I saw it in an article recently with like a Dua Lipa story. I think it's a good couple thing for them. I think she's under the radar a little bit where he's kind of – it's just not too much of a Hollywood name where I don't know what she does for a living, but it's not like it helps out her star power. Um, she used to be- uh, She's like a jewelry designer. She runs like a jewelry brand or something like that. So yeah, she she's, is, she's, she's in the definitely family. not like an actress or something, which – that's good for him. I think I think these big celebrities, they get to a point where they're like, 
I dated the other big celebrity. It was great for publicity. Everyone covered it. I was talked about. But then you hit a point where you're like, I don't want the celebrity because I want like a normal relationship where someone's not traveling halfway around the world to film a movie for eight months. That, that puts a lot of strain on a relationship. And so I think you see like George Clooney or Selma Hayek or Tina Turner. You see them marry people who are not in the spotlight and it is a very good move for like a stable relationship. Um, yeah, she very pretty though. Very pretty. Like she's got this natural look to her. Very pretty. And she was married to a vampire diaries, Paul Wesley, which I never really realized like how attractive she was when she was married to him. But, um, um, yeah, she's very pretty girl. I think it's a good fit for him. It's a good look for him. 29 is a good age. So, um, have fun, Brad. He's the man. He's the man. <laughs> He is the man. All right. Well, that is it. That is your raw rundown for this week. We're catching you up on uh, everything that happened this week. I'm assuming next week uh, there'll be more shit because you know what? This is Hollywood, and this is you can't go a week without there being something big in the news. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. Make sure you join our private Facebook page called Off the Record. That's where we uh, like to chat directly with you guys. You can ask us questions. We try to answer as much as possible. You can request your guests that you would like to see on the podcast um make sure you follow us on social media we're on tiktok instagram facebook everywhere you can follow us personally you can follow adam at adam glenn you can follow me at dax holt and uh we will see you guys i guess wednesday we'll see you on wednesday all right see? later hope you like that video we got a lot more where that came from hit that bell like subscribe share with a friend the best thing you do support us is really doing that and uh we really need the money because we hair jump. <laughs>